morning everyone. In this week's video I wanted to take you on a little bit different of an adventure this week. You know usually I'm out in the field spending time with these awesome animals taking you along showing you different video clips and the images that I'm able to get of these different species that I spend time with. But you know photography is more than just getting out in the field and taking pictures and observing these animals. A lot of the work that goes into these pictures, as you probably well know, is behind the scenes, processing the images, selecting which images to process, all of that stuff. So this week I wanted to take you along as I go through that process with you and show you how I select the images that I choose to process and once I actually get them in Lightroom, what I do to those images uh, before I export them, before I post them on social media, or before I print them and sell them. All that stuff I wanted to cover in this week's video. This topic was actually a request from one of you, and as always, I just love getting requests from you guys, so please, if there's something that you want to see on this channel, just let me know. I take all of those recommendations, all those requests, suggestions into consideration when I make these videos. I just want you guys to be happy with the content that you're seeing on this channel and I want it to be helpful for you in your own photography. So without further ado, let's jump right into my post-processing process of my images. So first things first, actually taking the image. When I'm out in the field, there's quite a few things that I look for when I take an image. I'm always paying attention to the background, the composition, looking for leading lines, framing, different stuff like that. These are things that I've touched on on previous videos before. You know, I've talked a lot about backgrounds, things that you can incorporate into your backgrounds, how you can add more color into your backgrounds. These are things that I've touched on on previous videos. So I'm not going to touch on that a ton in this week's video, or really at all. This week's video is just dedicated to showing you, after I've taken the images, what I do next. So first things first, after I've taken the image, I review those images and the way that I do that and again everything that I do in this video just please remember this is how I do things it may be different for you it may not work for you you may have a different or better way that you do things this is how I do things and it works great for me and the type of photography that I do so just keep that in mind throughout this video so as I review my images you know I've got my images on my camera and this is actually where I review them. I know a lot of people will put their images on their computer before they uh, review them and whatnot, or they'll review them on their computer. I actually review mine on my camera. I feel like I can zoom in better on the camera and check for sharpness, things like that. So uh, I actually review them all through the viewfinder and then I write the number of the image down that I want to process. So, you know, I'll pull my image up and I'll just look through the viewfinder and I zoom in and I check for sharpness here. So I'll, do, I'll just do this on a couple images here. And then once I find an image, I check the number and then I've just got a document on my phone and I write all those numbers down here. That way when I actually put the images on the computer, I know exactly which images to check and I can import them very quickly and very easily. All right, now let's review a few things that I actually look for in the images that I take. As far as like composition goes, different things like that, how I select one image versus another image. And I'm actually gonna show you guys this on the computer just because I think it will be easier for you to see on a bigger screen and uh, throughout this video as well just keep in mind rather than me just you know turning all around and talking to you this way I'm just going to go through my process focused on the screen focused on what I'm doing and I'm just going to talk you through it uh, I'll share the screen with you so you can see exactly what I'm doing uh, so please don't get offended if I'm not talking directly to you as I go through this process again I'm just going to stay focused here and just talk you through walk you through the process that I take Okay, so let me show you a few things that I look for as I'm going through and selecting the images that I want to import. Let me show you how I select those images, uh, some things that I look for as far as composition goes, different things like that. So I was up on the mountain photographing these bighorn sheep, some of my favorite animals 
to photograph this time of year. I've got my images selected and I'm getting ready to import them, but let me show you a couple different images here as if I was reviewing them on the camera, some things that I'm looking for. So I've got this bighorn sheep and you know, it's kind of looking at me. I liked this image best for a number of reasons. So I've got this mountain behind it. Uh, I've got some color in the rocks here. I've got some of the foreground here. And as I process it, I'll probably crop some of this rock out here just because it's a little distracting. But as I go through these images, you see I've got some that are very similar. And then the big horn changes position. So the reason I selected this one first is if you zoom in, which, let's see here. You can see that it's sticking its tongue out a little bit. I always like stuff like that. I love catch it, capturing the uh, character of the animals that I photograph. So any little thing like that, I uh, do like to see. Now, one thing that I don't necessarily like when I look at this picture is this pinned back ear right here. So if you know animal behavior, a lot of times they show signs of stress by pinning their ears back. Now, both of the ears weren't pinned back. This is a very comfortable sheep. It wasn't stressed at all at my presence. It was simply listening to some bighorn sheep that were further up the mountain, up this way, and they were starting to run down. So it's just listening to them coming down, looking at me curiously. Um, so, you know, looking at it, it doesn't look like a stressed animal, but I would have preferred that both ears were facing forward. But still, I like the image overall. If I go back a little bit further, computer's being a little slow, here we go. Uh, it's got its head down. I don't like that so much. Uh, I don't have enough of the background in there. There's too much foreground in my opinion, and it's just down eating. There's not a whole lot going on. And so I didn't select any of those images. Out of that series of images, the one with its little tongue sticking out is the one that I liked there. I'm going to share one more image with you guys. I took a lot this morning. It was a really, really fun morning. Okay, these were some of my favorite images this morning. So here we have a bighorn ram. Uh, he's, he's smelling the air. So we've got some ewes in front of him and he's checking them to see if they're ready to mate. Now, something that I didn't like about this image, and you can probably already guess, is this bum right here, this sheep bum. So that's something that I personally really don't like to see in wildlife images for the most part. I don't like partial animals, especially their rear ends. I, it's just not appealing in an image, in my opinion but I did select this picture as one to process because I've got enough space, just enough space here where I can crop this really nicely and we'll get to that when I process it. But I've got a nice background here. This picture had just ridiculous, just awesome, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it, detail in the eye, which I really liked. So this is one that I will be will be processing. Now as I move forward a little bit, you can see these images very similar. Now here are uh, two images. One I chose, or you know, one type I chose, one type I didn't. So I chose an image with this posture here, you know, that lips up, and I didn't choose one of this posture here. Now those are very similar and there's things that I like about each type. But the reason I chose one in this posture here is because I can see the entirety of that horn on this side, this left horn right here. Um, I, can see, I can see it coming all the way down, whereas here it breaks and then it comes out of his chin here, which again is fine. And in this posture, you can see this looks more circular here. But, you know, I, I like to see that full horn, it makes it it shows very well how big this ram actually is, how thick his horns actually are. He was probably the biggest one in the group that I was with this morning. So I opted to choose an image like this versus one like that. And you can see just a very slight difference there. Yeah, those are some of the things that I look for when choosing an image to process. 
So now that I've selected some, let's actually walk through my processing process. So I'm going to use one of these images. Let's use this one. This was my favorite one. So we're going to process this. And just to reiterate, just to remind you guys, this is how I process things in Lightroom. I am by no means a Lightroom professional, anything like that. Uh, I've never taken any courses, anything like that. I don't use Photoshop. My, my main goal when processing an image is to make it look as accurate as to what I remember it looking like when I took the picture. So I really don't do a whole lot here in Lightroom and I will show you what I do in my process. But if you've got any tips, any suggestions, anything like that, please just let me know in the comments. I love learning from you guys, and this is a place where we can all learn together. So again, I would just love to learn from you guys, but I'm just gonna show you what I like to do when I process these images. The first thing that I do is I come down here to Tone Curve, and I'll adjust my highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. Usually when I'm, or when I'm processing my images, I compensate a little bit on the highlights. I take that up just ever so slightly. And a lot of what I do is just sliding these along until I see what I like to see or what I remember seeing. So somewhere around there on my highlights. Lights, I might actually take these down a little bit because I've got that sky and snow behind and the grass is really light but that I feel like I'm losing too much of the detail so I am actually going to take this up a little bit to about right there if anything I might take this right back down to zero we'll see Darks, I usually take down. I like creating my own contrast by increasing the lights and taking the darks down a little bit in my images. And we'll pull the shadows up a little bit um, further up. But here, yeah, we'll pull them up here a little bit as well. So that's really all I've done here. You can see on the actual tone curve, I haven't really done a whole lot. But that's kind of where I like it to be. As far as exposure goes, I like it where it's at for now. We'll play with that after I've adjusted everything else. Contrast, I don't do a ton because again, I like to create my own contrast by pulling those lights up and the darks down. So contrast, I'm not gonna do a ton. Somewhere around nine is where I usually have it. Highlights, I can already tell I'm taking these down pretty far on this image because I do have a lot of contrast. I've got this kind of lighter area in the grass right here that could be a little bit distracting. And then I've got this sky up here in contrast to the darker sheep. So I already know I'm gonna be taking my highlights down and that'll pull some of the color from the grass and the mountain as well. Probably somewhere, somewhere there. And when I say pull some of the color, I mean make it more visible, not leach it out, but it'll make that color more visible here. It'll give me an overall, like, more warm image. So then we might go back and touch on the white balance here in a second. Shadows, I'm going to pull those up just because I've got this really dark region on his neck where the fur was a little bit darker and the light wasn't really hitting it. But I don't want to go crazy on that. So, somewhere right around there, 50, I think, maybe 53, I liked that. Yeah, right there. Whites, again, I'm gonna take down, just because I've got this, this white sky behind, and it's really white. Now, as I do this, though, you'll notice that the image is gonna start looking warmer. That grass is all of a sudden gonna start looking a lot warmer, the sheep are going to look a little warmer. And I like the look of a cool image. So again, I'm probably going to be taking that temperature, the, the white balance down a little bit. Blacks, I'm going to take down. And again, that'll make some of the colors a little bit more visible. Some of the colors in the mountains. I'm not going to move them a ton, though. That's probably 
where I'm going to leave it. That's looking pretty good to me. Now, overall, the image looks good. It's looking good on the histogram. Uh, this is important, the histogram. A lot of people just look at the image on their LCD screen, but you need to look at that histogram and learn to read one of those if you don't know how to already. I'm not going to do anything on texture. I never really touch that. Clarity, I usually take it up to around 14. Saturation, I don't ever do anything with. And vibrance, I'm not going to do a ton with. When I pull those blacks down, it portrays a lot more of that color naturally. And uh, the contrast, all that stuff kind of helps. So the vibrance, I'm not going to do a ton with. But I do want to do just a little bit right about there now this grass is looking a little bit more dark yellow than I remember it so as I mentioned before I'm gonna adjust this temperature probably that's too cool probably about right there okay here, let me show you these eyes. Look at those eyes. Look how bloodshot they are. Just beautiful. I mean, it's just, these guys fascinate me. Okay, so that's pretty much all I do as far as processing goes. I'm going to crop this. Again, I've got that little that sheet bum right there. I'm going to pull that out. And by so doing, I'm getting rid of some of that white on the sky. And then I'll check it full screen. See how I like that. I think that looks good. So as far as processing goes for an image that I would use on social media, on YouTube, on my Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is, those different social media platforms, one that I would show on my website that somebody could order, this is what I would do. Now, if this was something that somebody actually ordered, this is not what I would do. I wouldn't just leave it here and go print it, mail it to them. I would go into that image with a fine tooth comb, look for any, any flaw in it whatsoever. Um, I would smooth out a little bit of the noise that's in there. Not that there's a lot. I mean, it's, it's looking pretty, pretty awesome. There's not a ton of noise in here but I would smooth out any noise in there and just make sure it was just perfect before I send it to a customer who were to purchase this. But for the purposes of social media, uh, different things like that, this is really all that I do and it's not, not a whole lot. This is gonna be different from your process. Let me know what your process is in the comments. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to learn from you and let me know what your process is and why you do it. If you have some sort of method behind the madness, whatever it is, let me know why, because again, I love learning from you guys. And this is an area of photography that is probably my least experienced area, is the computer stuff, the Lightroom stuff. So I would love to learn from you guys and uh, learn together here. So let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. I know it's quite a bit different than what you're used to on this channel. It's quite a bit different than what I'm used to on this channel. But I really appreciate the request to see this process and I had a lot of fun planning and putting this video together. The most fun I had though was with the bighorn sheep, I'll be honest. You know, this computer stuff isn't nearly as fun as being up on the mountain with these beautiful animals. And if that's more of what you're wanting to see is the actual wildlife rather than the behind the scenes stuff, don't worry. I've been spending a lot of time with those bighorns lately and I've got some fun videos planned with them and some other animals that I've been out spending time with. So I'll be coming at you guys with some of those videos in the coming weeks and months even. I'm really excited for them and I hope you guys are enjoying the content on this channel. Again, if you have any requests, just let me know. I'm gonna finish processing these images now and then get going on some other projects that I've, I've been working on. Thank you so much for following along. I always appreciate the support. Have a wonderful week out there. We'll see you next time.